What do you think of the business and state connection with the private Federal Reserve banking system and our government? We have a private bank with issues that. What do you think? We don't have a private bank. We have what is appears to be a private bank, and what is sold to the American people is a private bank. But we actually have the worst of all worlds. There's three kinds of banking systems. The first banking system is a state-controlled banking system with a state yeah. central bank that invents money. Where you just invent money, that's communism, right? You're like China, you're like, this is the bank, you need some money, talk to me. That's the first bank. The second banking system is a private banking system with capital requirements. We don't have that either. We have a system where the private banking system takes all of the profit and then all of them is created by us. It's the worst possible system. And the reason we have it is because our government is bought. And the only you can you need Wall Street. You need a functionality of a capital market. If you tear down a capital market, you tear yourself down. If you separate the capital market from the government, I call it NCAA rules. All the all the money in politics rulemaking is all about oh you can give but you can't give and you got to do this and you got to do that and da 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 because everybody likes to make rules give somebody people people things to do the only way to do it is NCAA rules if you accept money you're fired same as same as if you're a quarterback at USC oh you're gonna be quarterback at USC that's fantastic oh you took money oh I'm, it looks like we need a new quarterback. And that's how we have to draw that line, and that's what the that's how the amendment was drawn up, and that's the debate that I want to begin this fall to change the language in that amendment to reflect the broad intelligence of the community, so that we have defined language by the beginning of next year, and can focus our energy on expanding the awareness of the agenda. Don't bother engaging the political structure until the conventions. Devote, because right now we're fighting with squirt guns against, we're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Yep. This is a joke. I'm a joke. But if we focus our energy on expanding the singular focus on separating money and state, which is the only thing we can all agree to. It's very short. Way to explain it. Caveman. Get money out. I'm, 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 I'm from the three-year-old caveman philosophy we've of marketing. Been, we've been here since day one saying this. I know. This is, That's this what is the I, one thing I know. This is what we saying. can do. We can do this. <laughs> that, no, this. That's the only thing we can do. Right. We have to do this <laughs> before we, we do anything else. Right. It's the only thing. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yes. yes. I'm I'm ask you <laughs> but the fact of the matter is they're bought, blah, 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 blah. If we devote our energy into expanding the awareness of this single issue, Magna Carta stuff, and then focus all of our energy, not at going, don't fight with the government. They're not going to listen. Focus on helping other people understand what you're trying to do. Focus on helping other people learn why you're trying to do it. Devote all of your personal and digital energy to that. The goal is to have a crowd large enough by the conventions next year that on the same day at the same time we can all send a single email to every person, in, every politician in America that just says get money out. 10 million at once. We're all individual little waves. If we don't align and shoot at the same time, we will not have any impact. Yeah, we can't. Go ahead. That sorry. Doesn't just mean campaign finance reforms. That means government, pri private business, corporate gov uh, out of money out of private all state. state. Think tanks. The whole nine yards. But we have to start on a constitutional level from the outside in for the simple reason that the government is incapable of doing it. For their, for, but I want you to have a little sympathy for the government for a second. Your politicians are wearing the equivalent of suicide vests of money. If one of the politicians tries, tries to get all courageous and is like, I'm not doing this. It's like Battle Royale, if you've ever seen Battle Royale, basically. Boom! Boom! That was funny. I hope another one of those shows up. But if we create an environment with an amendment, you can get all 535 of them to take all of their suicide vests off at the same time. In fact, you can force them to. And it's one of those things where if any one of us does it at once, whoever does it will die. Politically, thank God. <laughs> it's in the scheme of this world. Amendments represent the principles of the people of America. This amendment is not written as a mechanical concept. This 
amendment is written as a principled concept to separate business and state. I'm not looking to have a mechanical debate. I don't, there are other people who know much more about many things. My job as an anchor at NBC, my job as a public, as an author with Simon and Schuster, is to ask questions. The reason I'm doing this is because when I asked questions for the past three years on banking, on healthcare, on energy, I could never even have the debate. Will they, did, are you, you have and, a, I, and I must. What's that? When you're at MSNBC, we all like to think that the, the media's control and that the censors don't allow you right. to speak. Can you say anything about that role at MSNBC? I, I, I believe that it's one of those things where paranoia is right. It's, it doesn't mean you're paranoid if you're right or whatever the saying is, but at the same time, at the same time, the dominance of the fear prevents you from actually seeing what's happening. And I want you to look at what's happening. There is a traditional voice for the Democratic Party in the media. There is a traditional voice for the Republican Party in the media. But that is not the only voice in the media. My voice has been expanding for years now and is accelerating rapidly into this election with the explicit support of NBC. Can you give us an example of some others you think the media who, who, who are on similar, this? Expanding voice outside of those two traditions? Well, I, I would say that the people that I look to right now who I think are doing the best journalism both inside of the traditional media and bridging into the non-traditional media, which are honestly going to be largely names you already know. But I think on this issue, Lawrence Lessig completely understands it. He's not a journalist, but the root strikers are worth looking at. They agree with you, and they agree with me. Open culture. The, you have a, a couple of people. You have you know who's shockingly into this is and, and, and open to this narrative and this debate is Martin Bashir, who's also with us at MSNBC. You, it's hard to know it from looking at it sometimes, but of all the people at Fox who is open to this narrative and this debate, Shepard Smith. Yeah. Shepard Smith's like, I think the government's bought. I like it. And you're like, it is Shepard. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell you, buddy. I think they bought it. And they did. What's that? Absolutely. You also have obviously Matt Taibbi, Mark Ames, and a lot of these print journalists who are doing the real Gretchen Morganson at the New York Times, Louise Story. There are people that are actually turning up the documents. The difference, you can talk all day. The reason I have, and the reason I had the audacity to come down here and do all this is because we actually have the drafted text of an amendment. It's not just an idea. There's an actual amendment, and it will actually be debated by everybody from Ron Paul to Lawrence Lessig. I have Bernie Sanders on the show today, and we will publicly debate the language of this amendment with everybody from Tom Coburn down the line between now and January. I was wondering personally, if you don't mind, uh, it's a separate question, but have you ever heard about the Bilderberg Group or things like that? Yep. 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 Like yep. uh, for me, whether it's Bilderberg uh, issues, whether it is, uh, there's a litany of these things. Here's my attitude. I have no idea whether any of that is true. It's very possible some of it is. It's very possible none of it is. I'm in no position to figure it out. But I am in a position to advocate the separation of business and state in the 2012 election, which whatever the weather bill, the weather, I don't care what exists, the same way you can talk about all the conspiracies about religion and state before they separated it, we can eliminate all the conspiracies or a large a number of them by the only way to kill an alligator is to shoot it between the eyes one time three sentences you take money you're fired and that's sort of where my so when I, what I think about those, I feel like it's easy you can only do so much with your mind and your mind is either going to go to all the reasons why things can't happen or all the reasons why you're getting screwed or all the things that happened before that screwed you and by the way all of them can be true you might be screwed you probably are getting screwed with there's 50 reasons but that's a choice every day as to whether you're going to take the energy in your brain and say i i'm into this disempowerment problems are poor me even if you have every right to be poor me for 10 reasons. 
The problem with that is that you can't help yourself in that state of, and when your brain, you, you can't do anything. Did you get I did the poor me. I was like, I can't, and then I was like, well, what am I going to just lie on the couch and, and moan about this? We feel weakless, like we can't achieve anything, but that's the biggest lie, I believe, in our that political system. The biggest lie in our political system is that you don't have any power. But actually, I, you know what? That is not a lie. I'll change that. You don't have any political power. But we have all the political power. And so if we can align around principles, as opposed to trying to force alignment around mechanics and ideas, you have to understand, there's a, there's a strategic diplomacy that exists that is a way to maintain power. You'll see it most obviously illustrated in the mapping of the Middle East after World War II. The way you maintain power is you take a group that could potentially be aligned and you shatter it. And then you just stand back and take the money. And that's what we've done in the Middle East since World War II. As long as Iran hates Iraq and Iran hates Saudi Arabia and Yemen and na 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 na, well then all the Arab countries are never going to get together and be like, let's go get the, you know, you, you get it? Which that might be wise strategy short term in our self interest, but it's not wise strategy for the world in anybody's long term interest. And I believe the reason that there's a sense of disempowerment is we get, because of the internet, we get so sliced into these tiny mechanical and ideological debates. Because I'll give you lists of things we all disagree on all day. Oh, yeah. We can't even begin to have any of these debates until we separate business and state. And then once you separate business and state, we can all get together and fight it out 10 ways to China and it'll be the most fun we've ever had. And we're gonna be able to update this country into a renaissance, I truly believe that, that we have never seen before because we are stuck in the 50s, we have all these resources and opportunity. And we can, the thing is, everybody's like, well, how can you get more of this? It's gonna cost more. But what we all know is that the solutions to almost every problem tend to cost 99% less and provide 99% more. Yeah. We that the solutions don't just sometimes. give you more, the solutions that you can achieve now cost less and give you more. Like and that's what terrifies the greedy bastards. No. Is they're like, they're going to get more and it's going to cost less and my profitability in health insurance on Wall Street in the energy business is going to get annihilated. And the fact of the matter is the same thing that happened to music with Napster, when, they, when the industrial world watched what happened to the music industry in the 90s. They all were like, I think we're fucked. So, Dylan, do you and so they're like, we're going to need to engage right now to, to alter the legal structure using money in order to preserve the incumbent structure of the business model, even though the business model no longer functions. I think it's important for us, however, to acknowledge and honor the benefit of some of those institutions in the 20th century, and at the same time, acknowledge with the courage and resolve that they must be transformed. Walk me through a scenario. Okay. The amendment passes. The money goes away. Right. There's a massive debate. Right. What are we going to do? Of Holy shit. It's passed this amendment. Now we're really fucked. Right? That's my, that's what my goal is. I want to force the debate. Because if you don't force the debate, you can't get to an answer. And then, at that point, you can right. ultimately solve the problem. In things like you, this. I mean, and that's a difference of opinion. I, I you make great I, points, I, I, I and I thought that, I mean, the about the this. Do you think I'm wrong? Yes, Tell me. Because the problem is, the first question that they ask is, yep. what do we do to change the paradigm? And so, if you don't have an answer for I that, do have an answer. okay, well, that's what they need. Pass a constitutional amendment to separate money and politics. Once you pass that amendment, you have begun a cascade of resolution that will resolve itself. I could see one. But if you don't begin, if, 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 for my argument is this, money in politics is like grandpa's got a drinking problem. And you're like, grandpa's going to lose the house, the kids hate grandpa, the house just burned down, he lost his driver's license, you're like, I got to get him his license back, I got to get him a new house, we got to get the kids back. Yes, yes, yes. But if you don't get grandpa to stop drinking a bottle of whiskey every, every night, none of those other things is going to happen. And I argue that the, that, 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 that amendment represents 
the intervention, if you will, to stop the drinking, which will then force an honest inventory of the situation and then and initiate now you have a great that debate. To... The reason I came to this is I was like, I can't sit here on MSNBC and just do this presidential election playing Romney, Perry, Obama for the next year. I'm going to... That's awesome. <laughs> so I'm like, <laughs> it's pro wrestling.